Right. Now, if you're in the market for a sports utility vehicle, you are basically spoiled for choice because almost every manufacturer you could think of is getting into the SUV business. And while there are many sporty SUVs to choose from, I cannot say that there are as many great off-roaders. Which is why Land Rover has brought back the Defender. So if you're not familiar with the Defender, the OG Defender, this one, was a proper legend in the Land Rover lineup. It was a ridiculously hardcore, low-tech, go-anywhere, do-anything kind of vehicle. And that ruggedness and lack of civility was what made the Defender so special. When the chapter came to a close in 2016, Land Rover had made around 2 million Defenders during its 67-year-long production run. So, if Land Rover was going to bring back the Defender, it had to be a modern day vehicle that would stay true to its predecessor's heritage. Meaning, it would have to be nice and civil for the city, while retaining its extreme off-roading capabilities. Which brings us to the design, and yeah, it doesn't have the OG Defender look with the rustic, angular lines that we all love, but I am a huge fan of how it looks now. The boxy silhouette makes it very firm and robust, but it is also a very modern looking car with a distinctive silhouette and it doesn't have any unnecessary curves. The roof can hold up to 160 kilos of weight when moving and up to 300 kilos when parked. The front and the rear have very short overhangs, which gives it a very strong stance, but mostly it gives it extreme off-road entry and exit angles. I love the aggressive looking LED headlight and the square rear tail lights because they give the whole thing a very contemporary look. And along with all of the other bits, they really reinforce the Defender's DNA. Extremely tough, durable, yet sophisticated. And this carries on to the interior with this rugged meets modern feel. Land Rover calls this a constructivist modular interior architecture, which is a fancy way of saying how everything in here is highly practical and functional with this minimalistic design. So it's not just here for show. Like this dashboard, this is not just a dashboard. It is a magnesium crossbeam that runs the width of the car and it adds strength to the overall structure. My favorite aspects of the interior are the minimal design of the screen, the super comfortable seats, and it's also very well equipped because you have so many USB plugs and a three pin socket in the trunk. It's also very luminous and airy thanks to the sunroof and the Alpine windows at the back. When it comes to storage, generous is an understatement because you get loads of room in here, especially when you lower the rear seats, you get extra space and you have this grippy material that is very easy to clean. And as an added bonus, you get soft clothes. Now, these are some of the more standard things you'd get, but the truth is the Defender is highly customizable, so you can option it however you like it to match your comfort, practicality, or off-road needs. So far, it looks like mission accomplished. The Defender is highly robust, but modernized. Now the question remains, in terms of driving, has it moved away from brute harshness and gained a bit of civility? The answer is yes, because this doesn't drive like an off-roader at all. The ride is surprisingly pleasant, the steering is heavily assisted so it's very light and smooth, and because you're sitting quite high, you get a really nice view out. This particular model, the D300, has a 3-litre six-cylinder diesel engine that produces almost 300 horsepower and 695 newton meters of torque. And it's also got some sort of mild hybrid tech for increased responsiveness and efficiency. And it works. Now, if you, like me, are not overly fond of driving big cars on narrow roads, simply press this. There's a 360 view of your car in real time. It's like having a spotter. 
There's even a transparent hood cam that shows what the front wheels are going over. It's also got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a really nice sound system, heated seats, heated steering wheel, and all sorts of other stuff to make city life very convenient. And just as well, because 99.9% .9 of the people who would buy a Defender, especially here in Japan, won't be taking it off-roading. But if you are someone who's looking to take things to the next level, the Defender will prove to be one serious off-roader. Now once you engage off-road mode, the independent air suspension lifts the car giving it 291mm of ground clearance and the lower centre of gravity allows the Defender to go up to a 45 degree lean without rolling over. And it's got loads of state-of-the-art tech to tackle the most extreme environments effortlessly. Starting with this the latest iteration of the Defender's terrain response system, which analyzes the ground and adjusts the diff lock, powertrain responsiveness, steering and traction control settings accordingly. It also has a wade program, which basically sets the car up for driving through water. But perhaps the most impressive aspect of the Defender is how you can be crossing muddy waters in one moment and be driving on the highway to go home in the next. Of course, like any new car, it doesn't come without controversy. It is clear that it stepped away from the original Defender's looks to become more modern and city-friendly. But for a car to bring in equal amounts of style, comfort and mind-blowing off-roading capabilities without compromising on anything, now that is one brilliant accomplishment. <laughs> 